Hi, for this video what I want to do is demonstrate how to find the margin of error for a one proportion z interval. So when we're dealing with confidence intervals we always start with a point estimate and a point estimate for a proportion is the sample proportion and then after we find our point estimate we add and subtract our margin of error. So it's important to be able to find the margin of error. The formula for finding the margin of error is E equals ZC. This could be Z star in some other textbooks or some other notation. I know that different textbooks use different notation. So you would take your Z score for your level of confidence times the square root of P hat, where P hat is your proportion of success and Q hat is your proportion of failures, divided by your sample size. And all of this has to be contained underneath your square root. So all of that is under the square root, including the n. It's very important that you plug this into your calculator correctly. So I will show you with just a traditional scientific calculator that I um, use online called Desmos, how to plug it into your calculator so that you plug it in correctly. Okay, um, so like I said, I already told you what all of these um, mean, but just in case you uh, needed it written out. I did put this down. Uh, some textbooks, instead of using Q hat, will just insert 1 minus P hat in instead in parentheses. So that is also an option instead of finding Q hat separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when you're finding the margin of error, sometimes they will give you P hat as a percentage and sometimes they will give you the number of successes out of the total. So sometimes you will have to find that. So the first thing that we want to do is we will need to go through and find our Z scores for our level of confidence. So 95%, I would look for 0.95. And for me, I find it's easier to use a T table. I know that it sounds counterintuitive to use a t-table for this, but I like the way that the t-table is laid out um, because it tells you level of confidence at the top. So I would just find the 95%, the 0.95, and so that would be our middle column. And then we would just go all the way to the bottom. The infinity row of a t-interval is the normal distribution. So these are z-scores. Anytime you look at the infinity, um, the inf infinity is the z-score. So we would look for the middle column, or yeah, in the middle column, and we would get 1.96. Okay, so our ZC is 1.96. Our P hat is going to be 0.45 because we always write this as a decimal. So we would just divide by 100. And then to find Q hat, we would do one minus our P hat. So this would give me 0.55. And our sample size in is going to be 625. So now we would just plug this in and we would see that E is going to equal 1.96 times the square root of 0.45 times 0.55 divided by 625. So I'm going to just show you guys how to plug this into your calculator. So let me grab a calculator and we would just type in 1.96 square root 0.45 times 0.55 and on this calculator it does put it underneath here, it's okay. If I would have put the parentheses around the top, it would have put the entire thing. Mathematically, it means the same thing, so it's not gonna be a problem. Sometimes you do have to watch that, um, but with the multiplication, it will go from left to right. So this would give us our value. I typically round to three or four decimal places, so since this one is 0 .0390, I'm just gonna round to the 0 .039. Okay. And that's it, that's our margin of error. So then if you were actually creating a confidence interval with this, you would take your P hat and you would subtract this number to get the lower limit. And then you would take your P hat and add this value to get your upper limit of your confidence interval. But for this one, all we were finding is the margin of error. So the margin of error is plus or minus 0 0.039. Okay, so then sometimes, instead of giving it nicely to us as a percentage, um, we would be given a number of successes out of the total number. So to find P hat, we would just do the 375 over 500. For this one, it ends up being a nice concise decimal. Um, this one, when you do plug in 375 out of 500, it gives you 0.75. So if it gives you a decimal like this, it's okay to do what we did in the last one. Um, if it gives you a decimal that continues on forever and ever, it's better to leave it as a fraction when you plug it in. And so I will show you guys that in just one second. Um, but I'm for this one, I'm going to leave it as a decimal. 
Q hat, remember, is 1 minus our P hat, so that would give me my 0.25. Our N is the number of people that we surveyed, so that would be our 500. And we do have to find our Z-score. So finding our Z-score this time, we're going to look for 90% confidence on that table. So we would go up to the top and find 0 0.90. These are the most commonly used levels of confidence, so most likely those are the ones that are going to be used. If not, I do have a video that shows you how to find um, levels of confidence using both the TI-84, the TI-Inspire, and how to use the other table if it's not on here. So using the normal table, the Z table, but if it's on here, I will always use this one. So 1.645 would be our value that we would use for our ZC. Now to find our margin of error, all we have to do is plug it in. So we would have 1.645 times the square root of 0.75 times 0.25 divided by 500. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab my calculator. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter so I can go to a new row. So I'm going to do 1.645 square root, and this time I'm going to go ahead and put the top part in parentheses so it looks like how I wrote it down. Um, 0.75 times 0.25, and then I would close my parentheses. And now when I hit divided by 500, notice how it did make it look different. As far as mathematically goes, they're equal to each other, they're equivalent expressions, um, but this makes it look more like how we had it written down. Okay, so if it was something, like if it was addition, it would be a different thing. So it would be really important to make sure you put parentheses if it was addition at the top. So with this one, we could say that it's 0 0.0318. Um, five, so I would just round it up 0 0.0319 approximately. I forgot what it was, sorry, my brain went blank for a second. So 0 0.0319. All right, so this would be our margin of error for this one. And then the last one that I'm going to do with you, I did want to show one like this just in case because a lot of times um, a lot of teachers or professors use online homework platforms and having it not exactly the same as what they're getting. Like for this one, if you do end up when we find our P hat, and I'm going to show you in the calculator what it looks like, when I take 612 and divide it by 700, so when I go in here and I take 612, and I divide it by 700, you can see that it gives me 0.874285714. That means that it continues on and on forever and ever. Um, and so for this one, if you rounded it to 0.87, it's going to give you a very, very different answer. And so it's really important that if you have something like this that's not concise, so like on the last one, I didn't show it to you, um, but when I typed in 375 divided by 500, it gives me 0.75. So if it's a nice concise decimal like this, then go ahead and convert it to a decimal. If it's something like this where it continues on forever and ever, uh, or it's a repeating decimal, then I would go ahead and leave it as a fraction. You can reduce, like if I hit convert to a fraction, it will reduce for me, but I typically don't take the time to reduce it. I would just leave it as the 612 over 700. Okay, um, so let me go back into here. So since this is approximately 0.8743, if you do round, I advise to round to at least four decimal places. But I'm going to go ahead and plug it in as a fraction. Okay, so to find Q hat, basically what you can do is I could just take 700 minus 612. Because there were 612 that agreed, if I do 700 minus 612, there are 88 people who disagreed out of this one. Okay, so I would just leave it like that. Again, I'm not going to convert it to a decimal just because it's more accurate, more precise to leave it as a fraction. And our sample size is 700. Okay, so if I come back in here, we have to find 99%. So 99% <clears throat> is our last column, and we would come down and see that it's 2.576.
All right, so now we have all of our information for us to be able to find our margin of error. So when we set this up, we would do 2.576. And when you're plugging it in as a fraction, you do want to be very careful about how you plug this in. So when I plug this in, I'm going to put 612 over 700 in parentheses. And then I'm going to put the 88 over 700 also in parentheses. And then if you want both of them to show up on top, you would go ahead and put parentheses around the entire top. And then we would do 700 in the denominator. Make sure that all of this is underneath your square root. So if you have a calculator where it opens up a parentheses for you, be careful about not closing it too soon. Like always watch for those parentheses. Um, the calculator that I'm using is very nice for calculations like this. Like I said, it's an online free calculator called Desmos. Um, you can just Google it and it's D-E-S-M-O-S. -S. Okay, so now if I plug this in 2.576 times the square root, and like I said, I'm going to go ahead and double parenthesis here and I'm going to do the 612 divided by 700. Okay, and then I'm going to open up a new parenthesis. I just arrowed out of it to get out of there. 88 divided by 700. Okay, and then I'm going to just go outside of the parentheses and I'm going to hit divided by 700. So if you notice, it looks exactly like I had it written down and it gives us approximately 0 0.0323. So we can say our margin of error for this is approximately 0 0.0323. I do want to demonstrate to you why I use the fraction instead of the rounded version. So if you guys recall, when we typed in the 612 divided by 700, it gave us this. So if I rounded to 0 0.87, let's just say that I rounded to 0 0.87, um, that means that our Q hat would be 0.13. If I type that in 2.576 times the square root of 0.87 times 0.13 divided by 700, notice that we get 0.0327 instead of 0 0.0322. And if they have you go to four decimal places, it's possible that you'll get the wrong answer. So for this one, notice that this would round up to a three, where this one would stay at a two if it had you round to three decimal places. And if you're using an online homework platform, the technology doesn't recognize that you did this, you rounded. So that's why I always advise my students to make sure that you use fractions rather than decimals when you have a situation where it's not a nice, concise decimal. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.